Telegram is known for its privacy features and massive group chats, but there's a darker side to it that not everyone sees. Scammers are using it as a playground, tricking people out of their money in ways that are getting more creative and harder to spot. In this video, I'm going to reveal the tactics these scammers use, how they lure people in, and how you can avoid falling victim. If you think you'd never fall for a scam, stick around. What you're about to see might change your mind. To understand why Telegram is the way it is, we must first understand the man behind it all. So I thought, hmm, it could be a good idea to actually come up with a, you know, a decently encrypted messaging app. Uh, and my brother, being the genius that he is, he was able to create this encryption standard that we are using up until this day with minor changes. Uh, but the so idea your came brother from... wrote the encryption? Yes. Pavel Durov is the co-founder and CEO of Telegram, known for his focus on privacy and resistance to government control. Born in Russia, Durov gained fame as the founder of Vkontakte, VK, Russia's largest social network, which he launched in 2006. VK quickly became extremely popular, making Durov a major figure in tech in Russia. However, he faced pressure from the Russian government to hand over user data and censor political content on VK. When he refused, he found himself increasingly at odds with Russian authorities, and in 2014, he was effectively ousted from the company and fled Russia, eventually giving up his citizenship. Following this, Durov focused on Telegram, which he had launched a year prior with his brother, Nikolai. Telegram became known for its end-to-end -end encryption and focus on privacy earning a reputation as a messaging app that prioritized user security above all. Today, Durov lives a somewhat nomadic life, often changing locations, and he's positioned Telegram as one of the few truly independent tech giants. However, this independence has also drawn criticism, as Telegram is sometimes used by scanners, criminals, and extremists who exploit its privacy features. One good example of this is a social media figure who goes by the name Punch Made Dev, who has recently drawn significant attention for allegedly running a carding shop and promoting cybercrime. Crubs on security and other sources revealed that Crunchmade Dead Store offered access to compromised financial data like Cash App accounts and Fools packages containing personal information for identity theft. His online presence further amplified these activities with flashy images and videos that glamorized the cybercrime lifestyle, effectively mixing entertainment with potentially real criminal activity. This intersection has fueled significant controversy, with discussions about whether this setup was meant for shock value or if it actually breached legal boundaries. It's unclear if law enforcement will take further action, but the line Deb has walked between entertainment and alleged crime has sparked a discussion about accountability for influencers promoting cybercrime as a lifestyle. His case represents a unique challenge for both social media platforms and law enforcement as they consider whether such content should be classified as art, satire, or something more serious. Telegram played a central role in Punchmade Dev's alleged card shop operations by serving as a platform to promote and facilitate his cybercrime activities. He used a Telegram channel associated with his persona to direct followers to his shop, which sold hacked bank accounts, stolen credit cards, and identity data. The Telegram channel acted as a point of contact where users could purchase these illegal services and receive support if issues arose with their purchases. Additionally, by linking to this Telegram channel on his other social media profiles, Bunchmade Dev effectively funneled his audience, many of whom were drawn by his flashy, crime-themed rap videos, into a more private, encrypted space. Telegram's decentralized, private nature makes it a popular tool among individuals promoting and conducting illegal activities because it offers some shielding from law enforcement. His operations through Telegram reflect a growing trend where influencers use messaging platforms to not only connect with fans, but also to facilitate underground transactions without direct scrutiny. But why is Telegram so secure? We know the founder is essentially a criminal himself, so obviously he's going to appreciate the fact that he can be headquartered in Russia while committing white-collar crimes in America, which is a win-win situation for everyone involved with Telegram. But what makes the platform so superior in regards to withholding information from law enforcement? Telegram is renowned for its strong stance on privacy, combining end-to-end -end encryption for secret chats with a unique, globally distributed server network that separates data and decryption keys across jurisdictions. This design makes it challenging for any government to access user data without an extraordinary level of coordination. Unlike other messaging platforms, Telegram collects minimal information, only a phone number is required for sign-up, and it doesn't store secret chat content on its servers. Furthermore, Telegram's MT Proto encryption protocol is partially open source, allowing for external audits, though its non-standard nature has drawn some scrutiny. 
Founder Pavel Durov's personal commitment to privacy also drives Telegram's resistance to law enforcement data requests, as he has openly refused to comply with government pressure, including from Russian authorities. By offering additional security features like self-destructing media and two-factor authentication and limiting cooperation with law enforcement, Telegram has become a trusted platform for users seeking privacy. This stance, however, has also drawn criticism, particularly from authorities who find it difficult to access information on the platform. Since Telegram's strong privacy protections make it challenging for authorities to access user data directly, governments have often resorted to alternative measures. In countries like Russia, Telegram has faced outright bans, with authorities attempting to block access to the app in hopes of limiting its use among citizens. However, these bans are usually circumvented by users with VPNs and proxy servers, reducing their effectiveness. In other cases, governments have pressured Apple and Google to remove Telegram from their app stores, though this has met with limited success due to Telegram's popularity. Authorities have also turned to indirect methods, such as infiltrating groups on Telegram to monitor activity, gather evidence, or identify suspects. Additionally, some law enforcement agencies have pursued legal avenues by demanding user data from other apps that might link to Telegram or by targeting individuals with court orders to unlock their devices. Despite these efforts, Telegram's resistance to data sharing and its encryption-first approach make it one of the most challenging platforms for authorities to penetrate directly, often leaving officials frustrated with limited access. Through Telegram, Pavel Durov has crafted a platform that embodies his unwavering belief in privacy and freedom, a space where users' data remains untouchable, no matter the pressure. But in a world where privacy is becoming increasingly rare and surveillance looms large, Telegram's journey seems far from over. Will Durov's commitment to privacy withstand the relentless push for control, or will it be forced to compromise under the weight of global scrutiny? For now, Telegram remains a rare sanctuary, but in the ever-changing landscape of the internet, only time will reveal whether Durov's ideals can truly endure. I don't know if you guys have realized or not, but Telegram scams are becoming increasingly more common as time goes on. Now, I'm sure everybody knows about this one. We get the fake crypto airdrops, right? The airdrops where scammers will essentially uh, pretend like they're giving away some crypto. They're doing an airdrop. And uh, in reality, what they're really doing is they're going to get a whole bunch of people to connect their wallets. And once these people connect their wallets, this person will be able to gain access to those accounts, steal crypto, steal their money. Then we got fake investment groups where scammers will actually create these Telegram channels claiming, you know, they're going to be offering insider investment tips or cryptocurrency signals, promise everybody huge returns. But in reality, what they're really doing is, you know, they're going to get everybody to pay a membership fee. And once they get that money, they're going to disappear. Or they'll even, you know, continue offering these fake investments that are actually probably going to lose you money. Then we got fake job offers and freelance work. Right? So a lot of scammers, what they do is they'll put out these job applications, right? Acting like you need someone for a job. Uh, they need someone to do this remote job, something that you can do over the computer. And, uh, you know, they'll say that you got to put in like a $2 security deposit or whatever the case to apply for the job. But in reality, what they're really doing is, you know, once they get the, their money or they even say, you know, they need personal information, like your, your passport or ID, whatever the case. Um, and after paying or sharing this information, victims never going to hear back then we got the fake marketplace scam right so scammers will set up these fake marketplaces on the dark web etc etc creating these groups um acting like they're selling like super rare super hard to find items like electronics or designer goods stuff like you know supreme drops stuff like that stuff that sells out super quickly once it drops so these scammers will act like they have like a bunch of room to sell but in reality what they're really doing is they're just fishing for anybody to fall for it you know because these people are never actually going to receive anything and of course you know we have romance scams you know so many people because so many guys especially guys like it's so easy nowadays to create like a fake profile of a woman i mean i've literally done this before where i've created a, a fake profile of a woman on i'm not gonna say what platform and before i could even finish setting up the freaking account i was already getting friend requests from a whole bunch of these i don't, I don't know if it was other scammers at work or if it was like legitimate thirsty dudes like really trying to like i don't know i just don't understand it so many thirsty dudes out there so that's why romance scams are so so profitable one thing about it is a lot of the times you know these scammers are living way better than these people that are helping them out you know it's just crazy 
Then we even got fake surveys, right? So scammers are essentially creating fake surveys to try to fish for people's personal information. They'll create these puzzles that people go through with a prize at the end, or whatever the case, or a little reward at the end. No, but really, it's just a fake survey. You're not going to get anything out of it. And then, of course, you know, we got crypto pumping up scams where I create these crypto groups, these crypto channels get like over 50,000, 100,000 people in there. And uh, we'll just promote the heck out of one coin and really pump it up. And once it hit a certain point, we'll just dump it all and make a whole bunch of money. You know, essentially what they're doing is they're creating these groups claiming that they got expert insider knowledge on these crypto coins, you know, but it is illegal. So be careful.